welcome to volume two of Paano Ba to Live presented by Bill Costi. Okay, so our main man for this afternoon who will help us. Are you ready for really like serious life no, Normally advice? I bring Patato here. I distract the attention a little bit so I don't get that nervous. But today Patato is not here so yeah. I'm gonna... Okay, so just a bit of a background. Nico has zero Filipino blood. But zero now Filipino you are blood but full, Fili Pinoy. full Filipino heart. Okay, so it's not easy. Oh. It's not easy to move your life from halfway around the world. And that takes some sort of fearlessness. And like you saw in the answers earlier, there is still something holding a lot of this whole group back in trying out something new. What advice can you give? I come from a very small town in Argentina. So my next neighbor is like five kilometers away from me. I live surrounded by cows and horses. It was my mom who pushed me to get out of there. Not because it's a bad life, because there's much more things to discover. I yeah. think that the being afraid of doing new things or being afraid of change is something very normal. Um, everyone goes through that. Um, change is something we always try to avoid. But I think that once we go through it and, and we try something new, regardless if we succeed or not, I think it's a learning point. When I came here in the Philippines, it was seven years ago, um, before meeting Solen. This was for work, purely for work. Yes, sh short version. So I left Argentina 2007 and I started working in this company that I basically was managing projects in underdeveloped countries. So I live in Africa a lot. I live uh, in Eastern Europe, in the Caribbean. So I get to know different places and I, they sent me to the Philippines eventually. And I fell in love with the country, with the people. All this before Solen. So <laughs> she's not the reason why I came. She may be the reason why I stay. I'm very sweet sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, quotable I, quotes, Kaini. So. Yeah. Can you send that to Solen? Because that, <laughs> that was pretty sweet. Instagram I story that, tag yeah. at Solen. She's, yeah. She's still upset with me from something yesterday, so that may help. <laughs> Just tag me, I promise, repost. Yes, when I came here, um, of course, deciding to stay was really hard because I'm 17,000 kilometers away from my loved one, from my friends, from my culture, and I was really afraid. And the first three years, the country were really hard. I mean, mostly business perspective, I made many, many mistakes. I pretty much lost all the money I saved in my 10 years of working in the country. Uh, it was my fault because I didn't take enough time to understand the country. I wanted to make things more efficient. So at that moment, those first three years felt like a waste. What did I do? Three years, lost all my money. But now, four years after, when I changed my mindset, instead of thinking of how can I make things more efficient, you start thinking, how can you help people, right? When I look back now, I think those three years, I had courage of trying something new and it went so wrong. It might be one of the main lessons in my life and that took me where I am today. Trying new things is always good regardless of the result. Because if you try a new thing and you fail, you learn. It doesn't matter the outcome of the new thing. What it matters is how you take that outcome. So that's from my experience. And about change, I heard this good quote. I don't even remember who it's from. But something about change is scary, but you should be even more scared if you're not willing to change. Because that leads to something worse if you're not willing to adjust and adapt. I assume it's safe to say that you moved here to the Philippines not just because you found the love of your life, but also because you found your work's purpose. So a lot of you, very good that you answered that the work that you're doing now you feel is part of your life's purpose. For Pinoys who see someone that looks like you and you say you're a farmer or an agriculturist, parang, really? <laughs> so Len thought you were a model, right? When you first met. Yeah, yeah so so Brazilian model, that's really... <laughs> <laughs> how does one find purpose in the work that they're in? So I think the most important thing is when you work or your career, you want it or not, will be where you spend most of your time, right? If you don't love what you do, if you don't really like what you do, it's not going to work. We all have financial uh, needs. Of course, we need to be realistic. You cannot, okay, go be a, a fireman. We need to live. We need to create a livelihood. But maybe you like what you do, but not every day will be perfect. So it's a roller coaster. And it's very important to have that perspective all the time. Like when you have a really bad day that we all do, I think 50% or even more of the days that we have are bad days in a way. But when you understand that it's a bad day but not a bad life, that's very, very important. But for that, you need to do something that first you like, that is something that you want to do. So you wake up every day and you want to do that, even though that 
they might not be the best day of your life, but you know there's a bigger purpose. And second, I think it should be a bigger vision of, of why you're doing that, right? You ask yourself always, why I'm doing this every day? You don't want to be a, a robot that you wake up, you go to work, you go back home, and there's no purpose. Because that's, I think, every human being and every person needs a purpose bigger than ourselves. Even if what you do is a small part on a bigger organization, that small part is very important. Because it's not about what one person does, but it's about the summatory. I don't know if that's the English word. It's in Spanish, summatory. You know, like everyone doing a little bit, you add it up, it goes for a bigger purpose. So even the smaller action, it's as important as any other action in order to achieve that bigger purpose. So if you know you're part of something bigger, I think that's something that is very, very important, that you have perspective of what you're doing, and you have a career, you have a path. Personally, you also need it, right? You need it to know, like, okay, I'm here today, but I want to go there. And you have that in your mind, you have that vision, and, and you know it, where you want to go. Always when you are sometimes, you know, you have a day that is all great, you don't know what happened, what am I, like, stuck in traffic or commuting, always take that time to sit down and say, okay, wait. In Argentina, we compare a lot of with football, right? In football, we say you stop the ball and look where all the players are, so you know your what game you're playing. So that's kind of the same, right? When you don't know where you're going, take your time, stop, think, meditate, do all those things that allow you to connect with yourself, uh, I think are, are very important also, to always put perspective in when you are a little bit lost on where you're going. Totally agree about parang stepping back and taking a look at the bigger picture. Because sometimes when you're just at your work desk, it seems like so much to do, deadlines, my boss is such a toot, or all these things. But if you step back, for example, you are assigned to make the coffee for your boss or fix the schedule of your boss. It may seem like such a robotic job and this is not what you studied for type of job. But technically, your boss will not be able to function without that coffee and without that fixed schedule. So you are definitely part of a greater purpose. Yeah. Uh, uh, you can